it is still back in the U Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. It. And what's that sound you're hearing? What's that sound you can hear? That is the Cloister Bell of Doom. I think I'm going to use that as a title for this uh, this video. That is the Cloister Bell of Doom for this uh, 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 unbelievably awful iteration of Doctor Who, which uh, I don't think is Doctor Who, quite frankly. And I, and I want to be clear, anybody watching it, it's not because Jodie Whittaker has a vagina. I do not mind Jodie Whittaker. Well, I've never actually seen her vagina, and I'm not. I'm not actually asking to. Quite frankly, yeah, no, no. But it's the 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 existence of a vagina doesn't scare me. It's one of the first things she said to Fanny. Hey, don't be scared of my 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 gender or whatever. But we're not scared. We're scared of it becoming. A, uh, a politically correct woke nightmare that's boring and preachy. Uh, uh, actually, I wasn't even scared of that at first. I wasn't even scared of that, but uh, uh, those who were, were proved 100% correct. So it's not that. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it's that it's awful. It's boring. I said boring and preachy. Uh, and the bottom line is uh, uh, Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker have chosen to make this doctor into a crushing conformist moron, which is just the absolute opposite of what the uh, Doctor is, who is a revolutionary genius. Yeah, no, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor. And I, I, listen, go watch it. If you, I'm, it's not like me. It's not like it's me who wrote it, right? I, 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 I would much rather she wasn't a crushing conformist moron. You know, I, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. Well, they didn't really think it through, did they? I think all they really cared about is... Uh, 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 representation, you know, because uh, uh, the uh, the entertainment industry is fighting a uh, a fictitious war, right? They think that uh, uh, you know when when we want our entertainment to to reflect the what the world we live in, to reflect our society, uh, uh, you know, when you make it, uh, uh, you know. 90 or 100 percent strong strong women who are taking charge and being very alpha males right which i don't i don't know what other language to use but it just it highlights the absurdity of it uh it doesn't reflect our world it doesn't reflect our world at all you know i think the reality of the world is that men and women are not interchangeable. I think men, I look, men, there are uh, a, a, a a portion of the world out there who who their gender is fluid. And God bless them. I have nothing against you. That's not the norm. And, and just because it's not the norm doesn't mean it's bad or I'm condemning anyone. It's just not the norm. And it is the norm in your entertainment. It is the norm in Doctor Who. It is the norm in Star Trek. It's the norm in... Uh, uh, across most of the BBC, you know, which is why BBC is hemorrhaging money, and I don't think they can survive. And more, uh, you know, circling back, circling back uh, to the beginning, uh, Doctor Who doesn't look like it's surviving. So uh, we have this article from the Guardian, came out on Tuesday, uh, July twentieth, uh, and it's uh, uh, um, putting to, uh, putting forth one of the unspeakable ideas that this Doctor Who is over, and I think they're. Uh, um, they're doing damage control. They're doing preemptive damage control so they can turn around and say, No! It was nothing to do with Jodie Whittaker or Chris Chibnall. It's just Netflix and age and uh, uh, a, 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 a bat flew in and mated with another bat in a cave and, and made bad Doctor Who. You know, listen, it's not like we haven't heard excuses like that before. So uh, 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 we're going to be going to be reading this article from The Guardian by this guy called Martin Bellum. And when I was looking at it last night on, on my live stream, I was with... Uh, uh, Dan and Noel. Oh, by the way, check out that live stream. It was awesome. It was so freaking nice to be streamed with Noel. Uh, I haven't spoken for a, a gazillion years, and it's just, I, I've really genuinely missed him. So uh, uh, that was really, really nice. Check out that stream. It was a good stream. But uh, 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 I think it was Dan. Da uh, Dan from the, uh, the Spacebook and Noel from uh, Tardis Zone. If you're not subscribed to either of those fantastic channels, please go ahead and do so. Uh, uh, I think it's Dan who said this guy, Martin Bellam, was the number one one of the number one flag wavers for the current era and would stomp on anybody who criticized it back in season 11. do you remember that back in season 11 where, where we were like what's going on what's it wait 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 why what's going on uh um uh, 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 the and calling everybody bigots and sexists and whatever. Yeah. Now he's the one to say, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, uh, this is over." So I haven't actually read this article yet, but we are gonna take the piss out of it. Okay, we are. Listen, listen, Martin, mate. If you're watching, if you're watching, you got a thin skin. 
Thank you for the watch, but maybe, maybe trot on. Maybe trot on! The rest of it might not be to your liking. Before we get into it, and Martin, you're included in this as well, uh, uh, hit the like button. No matter how much you dislike what I'm going to say, hit that like button. That'd be fan dabby double dozy. Uh, uh, hit the share button. Share me around, baby. Share. I'm, I'm, I'm not shy. Share me around. Like, share, subscribe, comment. I've got a gazillion comments to get. I say that every freaking morning. I do my videos in the morning, and I say that every morning I've got a gazillion comments to get. Why? Because I have a gazillion comments to get. Like, share subscribe but i do like your comments okay don't don't don't, don't mistake my kvetching uh i taught you a jewish word don't get, mistake my kvetching uh for uh, me not wanting you to do it so like share subscribe and also check out my indiegogo check out my indiegogo i'm not gonna be able to say this much longer because it's hey, we're nearly there okay we've re I reached the goal that i wanted to reach i've got a bunch of uh, uh, appearances got one today at seven or seven o'clock i'm on a uh, don chin's channel uh with uh, uh, uh stanley is this yeah, so it's good. I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm, I'm basically doing a, the fi a final runner, runner promotion. Then we're getting this out to print. We're getting out to print, so it's going to be in your hand. It, it, it depends how long the print the print queue is. I, I reckon it'll be a few weeks, right? But we're, we're on it. So what do you get? What do you get in this campaign? You get biblical Bible stories. So Jesus, Christus, Rashus, Rogues. Freaking awesome book. I did it. 220 pages long, or 240 pages. I think 220 pages long. Uh, I wrote and drew this. Uh, it's very biblically accurate. So if you are a Bible thumpery person like myself, you, you will like it. If you're uh, what I like to call one of the normal people, <laughs> you can also like it. You know, it's not preachy. I'm not trying to tell you what to think. I'm telling you a biblically accurate story that you probably don't know uh, don't know that much about. There's going to be bits in it you recognise, like Tower of Babel, Jonah and the Well, the Flood. But it's going to be done. It's done in, in again very biblically accurate, so it's very very different from from you know what uh, uh, what you would think it is. Uh, and also we have uh, this thing, the Imperium a love letter to Telly fans in '96. I just got the final page of artwork in for this. Uh, as beautiful double page spread of uh, Thunderbird. Uh, one and two flying across 1960s London. Of course, we're going to call them firebrands because I, 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 I don't want to be sued. I don't want to be sued. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, this is basically a love letter to Teddy Fancy of 1960s. Imagine James Bond, Emma Pill, uh, Doctor Who, uh, Monkey in the Space Suit, the Black Slav from 2001, bit of Thunderbirds, as I said, a bit of uh, 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 Prisoner. Yeah, just every everything 60s. A bit of Callan. Love this book. I really love this book. Artwork by, 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 by Dominic Racho, who did all the extras on it. So if you buy both books, you get this, you get this poster. I call Call it uh, uh, Noble Savages. The lovely Leela and uh, oh, God, I can never remember the characters' names like Ugo. The uh, um, Racco Welsh. <laughs> so, Racco Welsh. One million meters DC. Uh, the time machine in the background. K nine in the foreground. Why? Why? Why are they all together? Who gives a crap, baby? Who gives a crap? And there's a whole bunch more stuff. Anyway, so go go check it out. It's in the video. It's nearly done. It's nearly wrapped up. If you want your books quick, go check it out. And if you can, you know, if you can buy, buy one of my comics, that'd be freaking awesome. Okay? That'd be freaking awesome. Uh, uh, what's not freaking awesome? Well, this is kind of freaking awesome. Uh, 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 this article. Uh, exterminate! Exterminate! Oh, God, you know, it's always when they do an article about uh, uh, comics or something, or, or, or they do... Biff, bang, pow, like every time. Let me just reshape this a little bit. Make this a bit longer. There you go. There's my... um, exterminate, exterminate. Why it's time for Doctor Who to die? Because it's currently shit. That's why it's time to die. I mean, really? I, I, and again, this is a thing they will never, ever, ever admit. They'll never admit that what they do is shit. And it, it is. I mean, I, I mean, what else? What, what else are you going? Uh, I mean, look, Star Trek Discovery. If you try to watch it, it's 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 unbelievably bad, and they they don't care. They're like nobody likes it. It's doing very badly. Star Trek Lower Decks is like pretty much reviled by everybody and that doesn't stop no we'll make some more we'll make some more until the money runs out looks like the money's run out looks like bbc's over they've lost a million subscribers uh and i think it, you can look to like quadruple that in the coming year right i think the bbc is it, just it's reached a point where uh uh, uh it's non-viable right um why because they don't reflect the society they're trying to entertain you watch eastenders everybody's gay i mean i don't watch eastenders but i understand that everybody's gay and, and you know what if you're gay groovy baby groovy you know listen i've often thought being gay uh, uh, would have a lot of advantages over being straight in that you know you 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 have a uh, was it a sexual partner uh, uh, that has your the same male libido, which is kind of you know somewhat different from a female libido, right? And it seems to be you know you could be watching 
Doctor Who or football or whatever, and then half time comes along and you can have sex. I mean, like really, like that doesn't. I can't really, I can't really do that segue with with with, uh, with my wife. I gotta like, yeah, go out for dinner, be nice, you know. But yeah, you know, but again, everybody's gay, everybody's gay, everybody's trans, everybody's bi, and it's just like I understand. I understand that they very much want to convince us that the normative state for a human being is to be gender fluid. I understand that. It's not a normative state for a human being. I don't know what to tell you. You know, for the entirety of our... And God, and you don't, don't try giving them facts or logical reason because none of that, none of that, it all bounces off. So anyway, so what we have here is uh, Martin, Martin Bellum, uh, former flag waver for the current uh, the current era, uh, 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 seeing the writing on the wall, and I, I don't think they do. There, there's going to be another Doctor Who. I mean, they said there's going to be a very special surprise guest at this Comic Con panel on Sunday. Um, I, first of all, maybe it's the next Doctor. Well, a second, I thought maybe it's the next Doctor. Uh, uh, I think it's unlikely. I think they're going to regenerate into a cliffhanger. Right, I think they're going to trounce in it. Right, except except you don't get the glorious war games to war to, to, to come up to it. You get whatever drag that Chibble's going to vomit out, lazily vomit out onto a page. Excellent again. What it's time for Doctor Who? After sixteen years, the BBC's flagship sci-fi show is tired and suffering. It should go away to save itself. Yeah. Now, when did this happen? When did it get tired and flagging? Oh, about two years. About well, about two seasons ago. We'll say two years. Around two seasons ago. Right. Uh, um. When when Chris Chibnall took over now i i will agree i think moffitt's um lost focus uh shall we say for after uh, uh matt smith left it seemed like especially season uh well the commander's first season will be season seven uh well no season eight right season eight um was lackluster it was definitely lackluster uh, and uh, it seemed to be he was more focusing on Sherlock. In fact, that last episode of Sherlock struck me that it was supposed to be a really good Doctor Who story. The last episode of Sherlock, they go to this like maximum security prison on a on an island off the English coast, uh, uh, and yeah, to see um, Sherlock's sister. Uh, and it turns out that she, she's taken over the place. So that's obviously supposed to be Missy, and Sherlock was Doctor Who, and Watson would have been I don't know somebody from unit or uh uh clara or whatever but you see that scene and that was a great story that seemed to be where his focus was at and it was looking tired uh, and then you've got the bbc inclusive uh, inclusivity and diversity policy uh being introduced right you could see, really see it being introduced especially with the character of bill potts and i think season 10 was capaldi's best uh and uh, people really didn't like bill potts because she had to mention she was a lesbian all the time Bill, baby, Bill, Bill, why do you say you're black as well, right? I mean, like, look, I'm a black person. Look at me. I mean, I, I, okay. And they hired me. Yes, in racist England. No, no, no. There's no. They, again, they're fighting a uh, uh, an imaginary war. This war isn't real. Uh, the racism is real. You say racism doesn't exist. No, no. I'm not saying racism doesn't exist. I'm saying racism. Uh, uh, isn't a very powerful entity in the world until you guys made it so when you said there were uh, uh, evil national German national socialists uh, uh, coming out the shadows everywhere because they voted the way they didn't like right um Three series is, you, is the usual ten, uh, tenure for an actor playing uh, the Doctor. So, oh, please, please. I mean, uh, uh, I guess that's why they, they decided to do an, uh, another season with her, even though, like, the data was just crushingly awful, because would not do that would be to admit defeat, which is why I think they're making more Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Lower Death, uh, just, and Picard as well, because it's not that there's a demand for it in any way. It's that they don't want to look stupid by starting this idea. Uh, Russo Rimmel's arrived that Jodie Whittaker is about to step down. Michaela Cole, uh, Ollie Alexander, and Richard Ayodi are among the those tipped for the role. Nah, I don't think it was getting. But what if, instead of a new Doctor, the show actually gets uh, something the Doctor might prescribe to an exhausted patient? Arrest. Yes, yes, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, uh, now, is it a real rest and then with the intention of bringing it back? I actually think probably, right? I think they see the money uh, um, coming from, uh, 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 that can come from Doctor Who, and they like that money, right? Uh, uh, so I think they, if they, they, they would want to bring back, it's not like resting it in 89. You know, it's incredible. I, I, this is like, it blows my mind. 
it seems to be the erosion of uh, democracy and liberty and freedom of speech in America is being rolled out in exactly the same way as the 1989 cancellation, right? If you're around for that cancellation, I kept saying, oh, yes, we have every intention to bring Doctor Who back. Every freaking... Oh, 100%, we're looking at... Oh, no, nothing. They, was, they were lying. They were lying when they said that. And kind of say, if you ever watch any of the... Uh, um, uh, what's it? Those uh, uh, White House press conference. <laughs> They're like, uh, yeah, they got this woman called Jen Jen Saki, who is a fan freaking tastic liar. I mean, she oh so smooth, so in I mean, I'm very impressed. I'm truly gen genuinely impressed. Uh, uh, but even she's been like uh, 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 to try like can't really sell it, right? I mean, the 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 last thing was they are. Uh, uh, the okay, the what the I get this is a bit 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 of an aside, but it just blows my mind, right? It blows my mind. How do you how do you get the American government to uh, uh, restrict freedom of speech? They're not allowed to do that in the Constitution. You are you are allowed freedom of speech. So how do they practically get to do it? They go to Facebook, they go to Twitter, and they say, "Let me see all the tweets." And they see any tweets and any posts that they don't like. They say, "Oh, maybe you should uh, 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 get uh, get rid of that one." Right? And they go right. Absolutely yes, because they they are. There's no there's no daylight between them, uh, uh, and that's how they said. And again, they how they do it by smiling and lying, just like they did in '89, right? And, oh oh, we're gonna bring it back. The Doctor's not a battle weary Time Lord in the dark. Was it in the backwaters of pop, uh, all just popularity? That was a good uh, uh, good press release they wrote. I reckon Michael Grade actually wrote that, right? It sounded because it was slick. And good, fine. So, but I don't think it's. I think they're going to try and bring it back. The question is, uh, uh, will they bring it back in this same insane culture? Uh, uh, I don't think so because I don't think this culture can really sustain itself. I, I think, uh, uh, although look at China, cult cultural revolution seems to be doing well uh, uh, fifty years on, doesn't it? Um, so, which is basically the same thing as we're seeing here in, in the states. Anyway, the current uh, the current run started in two thousand and five, and even with such a flexible format as Doctor Who, there aren't many TV dramas that can stay in thirteen series in sixteen years. Uh, uh, Call the Midwife is probably one of the best uh, uh, BBC attempt in, at that in, in the past decade, and I believe Call the Midwife um, hasn't it, it hasn't got hasn't changed intrinsically, right? I think it's basically a feminine drama and remained a feminine drama, feminine historical drama. In fact, I am convinced beyond convinced that the stupid, uh, what was it called again? Brendan crap they had in, uh, um, what was it? Ascension of the Cybermen, Timeless Children. I can't remember, whatever it was, uh, was to fool people into thinking they're watching Call the Midwife where they flicked over and then, you know, they'll hang around for a couple of minutes and maybe they'll get their audience figures up. Didn't work, did it? No, it still went down. Um, soap operas can manage it, but uh, then soap storylines generally don't re uh, revolve around such uh, cataclysmic event uh, events as the universe being destroyed. Uh, the whole television landscape has changed since Doctor Who made its return in 2005. Yeah, it's run by insane people who are fighting a, a, an imaginary war. That's, I think, the biggest change. What they're going to say is the biggest change is Netflix! Oh, no! People want to watch... No, people aren't even watching Netflix. You know what they're watching? They're watching this. They're watching YouTube, right? They keep going after the youth market, the youth uh, you you aren't interested in anything they're putting out, right? No, no, they're, they're not. They're not. They're watching this. Well, they're they're watching a younger version of this. I would. If not, if you're one of the youth watching this, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Um, the 2003 series wasn't even filmed in HD. Yeah, Russell D. Day was actually really against HD. Uh, and there was Stephen Moffat that talked him around. Yeah, you know, those early series. They they if you get the Blu-rays, they are uh, uh, upgraded. Uh, yeah, upscaled. Uh, and the iPlayer was still a couple of years away. Yeah, do you remember? Uh, series two, uh, the Chloe Weber one, which wasn't that good. Uh, the, it was set in the future, the future where the Olympics was happening, and uh, there was a scene where they're watching. She was what they're watching BBC on a on a laptop, uh, uh, and they press the space to stop, and it was science fictiony at the time, right? And and then a few years later, it was real. It was, it was actually pretty cool. The current iteration of the show is up against uh, uh, the giants of Netflix and Disney+. Plus. Let me tell you, Netflix would bite their hands off to make a, uh, a popular Doctor Who. Netflix would... And I think they'll probably do a decent job. Uh, how, I, I, honestly, 
what are they going to do with Umbrella Academy Season 3? The, the star of it, who played a female character, uh, uh, is now male. Sort of. <laughs> whatever! I don't like it, trans, whatever it is. Uh, uh, are they going to make the character male? I don't know. I don't know. It kind of disturbs me, the whole thing. Um... This isn't, uh, it, this isn't just budget and production values of uh, programs such as Mandalorian and, uh, and Loki that are upstaging Doctor Who. And Doctor Who uh, could certainly upstage all of them because uh, Mandalor uh, look, Mandalorian, if it wasn't for Luke Skywalker, it probably would have been mediocre. Uh, although, I have to tell you, I love the Katie Sackhoff Mandalorian stuff in that. That was freaking awesome. Right? I, uh, that, that, that was in, the, in uh, uh, um, Gina Carano. Uh, Book of Boba Fett, I just don't really think I'm, I'm that much into it, uh, especially after the, G the Gina Corona firing. Uh, uh, I'm saying it's the storytelling. Something like WandaVision uh, seems in a different league. No, WandaVision seems like exactly in the same league, right? Exactly in the same league. That league is uh, taking, uh, generally speaking, masculine, uh, masculine products and feminizing them. Um, the MCU was essentially a masculine product, right? It was superheroes, uh, it appealed to eight year old boys, right? No, that's bad. Eight year old boys are bad. Uh, let's make it appeal to eight year old girls. And it worked. Eight year old girls do like, uh, uh, phase four more than they liked, uh, like The Force Awakens, which was a similar thing, or Doctor Who, right? Because the, there is, there is some real production quality there. Just for me, I can't not see the agenda running through it, which is, you know, we, women are people too. Really? Who doesn't think that? I'll tell you who doesn't think that. The the, the, the weird the weirdos that, that live and work in Hollywood, right? Who are like the worst people in the entire universe. Um uh is in a different league. And even taking around COVID, it was the with only eight, was there eight episodes expected in uh in the delayed season BBC production pace. Oh well, it's not who it's a storytelling. I miss that. Uh, yeah, they say the storytelling of Doctor Who is just very weak. And it is, practically speaking, it is very weak. I think the storytelling in WandaVision was far... Uh, WandaVision and, and uh, Loki, which was mostly boring, and Falcon and Winter Soldier, all of them were better than Doctor Who. Star Trek uh, and Star Wars about the same. Star Wars a bit better than Star Trek and, uh, uh, and Doctor Who, but Star Trek and Doctor Who are pretty much the same. Yeah, there's stories there. That's nothing to do with budget. That's nothing to do with, uh, um, uh, what can I say, intellectual bankruptcy. Uh, that's what it's going to do. Sound like WandaVision seems like in different league. And, and even taking into account COVID with only eight episodes expected in the delayed new season, it's not even delayed. It's not delayed. They said 2021, didn't they? And, and I, people kind of thought it'd be around September time. It's not even delayed. Uh, it's shortened. Uh, and then the rumor is the, of those eight episodes, six will be in the season and two will be specials in 2022. So essentially making uh, Jodie Whittaker run would be, what, 2017? Was that her, when she was announced? Uh, yeah, it must be. So they'll probably count uh, 2017, uh, even that. Let's say 2018, 2019, uh, 2020, 2021, 2020, five years. They're going to get the good station. Like, was one of the longest serving. I, I, why? Because they lie. They lie and they get a grain of truth and they lie. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, the people will see six years. Yeah, five years. Uh, with only eight episodes left, the BBC production pace is glacial compared to the streaming rivals. Uh, just as the 70s Doctor Who looked cheap and wobbly beside blockbusters such as Star Wars, uh, the show now suffers in comparison with Marvel, uh, Marvel TV shows. It really shouldn't, though. Honestly, it really shouldn't. I mean... Uh, um uh, it, it, look, the budget's there for uh, the decent production values. Uh, and, and generally speaking, I find the production values in Doctor Who um, often are very, very, very good. You know, I, I still say the uh, the design of the Cybermen from Essential Cybermen was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the effect shots are passable. Yeah, they're passable. Uh, it, it's all fine, really. It's, and it's... Uh, um, you know, I, I, there's no reason it shouldn't be able to go toe to toe with 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 one division, other than the star quality of the of the audience. And yeah, okay, admittedly, Jodie Whittaker doesn't have uh, uh, whatever her name is Olsen's star star power. Um, there's also uh, uh, an increasing story structure problem. Uh, okay, I'm intrigued to hear what this is. Uh, when Rossley Davis revived the show, he was very clear in his pitch. 
uh, to the uh, BBC executive that it wasn't about a 900-year-old Time Lord who could change their face. It was about two friends traveling together through time and space, having adventures and righting wrongs. Oh, my God, that breaks my heart just reading it. Oh, I, I, I'm honestly, my heart's aching. Right? It's, I'm not, my heart is aching for that. Yeah. Oh, man. That's such a clear uh, through line, right? Uh, now, uh, uh, there is now 16 years of new law, as well uh, as well as all new stories from the, uh, as well as all the stories of the 60s, 70s, and 80s for fans to think about every time there, 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 there's a new, uh, new story. Honestly, honestly, Russell e. Davis had it absolutely balanced perfectly. I think Moffat as well, to a certain extent, had it balanced perfectly. It was kind of like 80-20 or 70-30. 80 to 80% new ideas, new material, and 20 to 30% returning things that people were like, oh, look at that! We've seen Darnus again, Cybermen, right? The Master, like, but that, that balance really, really, really worked. Uh, Chimnall's first season, 11... Uh, had nothing returning, and it was just boring. It was just absolutely boring because his new ideas weren't very good. I mean, <laughs> it, it could have worked if he wasn't a uh, uh, unbelievably bad writer, uh, but but uh, but it didn't. Okay, it just didn't. Uh, Fade out here to the continuity of uh, some throwaway line from a skit ten years ago will send Legion of Fans into a friend uh, frenzy. Well, you got to work out a way of, and it hasn't really been that much of a problem before. Uh, uh, finding a way for everything to to be able to fit together, to sit together, uh, even if you have to squint a little bit. I mean, I think the uh, like unit dating with uh, Morton Undead is probably the biggest big, biggest example. But pretty much everything else kind of fits seamlessly, and the universe does has kind of rebooted more than once. So you know, you have the Daleks flying over over Canary Wolf in uh, Doomsday, and then nobody knows what they are again uh, you know, a few years later. Because, uh, uh, yeah, they, 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 I think they need to hit reset button, and they can hit a re reset button, and it doesn't really matter. So this thing about uh, uh, um, sending Legion of Fans into a frenzy uh, uh, for a throw alone, that's just bullcrap. No, that's what... What will send Legion of Fans into a frenzy is if you fundamentally tear apart the underpinnings of the show, the, the storytelling underpinnings of the show, uh, and for no reason, like for no, with no discernible uh, 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 reward for for that stupidity, right? That's what will send them into a frenzy. Uh, taking to social media and YouTube channels, talking about lazy writing. It is lazy writing. My God, was it? Uh, can you hear me? Had a, had an animated exposition, and it was awful. Uh, uh, and it's not lazy writing. I mean, it's somewhat lazy writing because I think Chris Chibnall is lazy. It's inexperienced writing. Be, the, yeah, when you uh, uh, when inexperienced and low quality writer, when you uh, hire from a small percentage of your uh, of your talent pool, which is if you're saying I don't want white men, who and, and it mainly appeals to white men, you, you've got about 20 30 percent of, of of your of that talent pool uh, um, to pull from, right? And so if you're pulling a hundred percent from 20 to 30 percent, the only result is quality is always going to fall. So lazy writing and bad writing and inexperienced writing. That's that's essentially what the problem is. Sometimes it feels like the show is being buried under the weight of its own continuity. No, 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 no. It's being buried under the weight of uh, um, vandalism, right? It's being buried under the weight of this actual uh, um, cultural vandalism. Uh, agenda swap of a role brought attention and uh, initial high ratings, but viewers since has since settled uh, settled as much the same levels as under Whitaker's predecessor, Peter Capaldi. No, 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 lie. That's a lie. They are lower. They are lower. One second. Can I pull up, pull up this graph? Do I have it here? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I have. Uh, uh, you know, uh, was it ratings uh, folder on my desktop? Did I get rid of that? Oh man, uh, where'd that go? Where'd that go? I must, I must. So you never clean up your desktop, okay? Because you will lose stuff. Uh, yeah, it's not here anymore. Wonder where, wonder where I put it. But essentially, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, they are lower than Capaldi, and Capaldi was the lowest in, in the uh, in in the revived era. And I will uh, point out that Jodie Whittaker had a very, very cushy uh, uh, winter, rainy winter spot. Where uh, that was that was on a Sunday, which was an which was a very easy time slot, and it was regular. It never moved. Seven o'clock, seven o'clock, seven o'clock. Oh, what the hell's that? That was weird. Okay, I don't know why that just happened. 
<laughs> this thing just opened up. Ah, okay, right, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah look, we'll, we'll, we'll have a quick look again. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> but I don't know why it opened up. Uh, uh, Whitaker has a very stable seven o'clock slot and in sandwich in between two very popular shows uh, called The Midwife and Country File, which mystifies me why it's popular, but it is popular, right? Country File is popular. Um, and it still achieved the lowest ratings uh, uh, pretty much ever, apart from two episodes of Battlefield in 89. And even then, the ratings for, for, for Battlefield at the time were going up. We're going in that whole season. We're just up, 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 up. Uh, the, the ratings are going down, 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 down. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, uh, now, and comparing to Capaldi, Capaldi uh, was on Saturday, which was a much harder time slot uh, in the summer, making it much harder and constantly moving. Didn't have, you couldn't go, oh, 7 o'clock Saturday, Doctor. No, it always moved in the, in, in the schedules and still did better. So start with your freaking line, right? Start with your freaking line. Uh, uh, it hasn't hasn't settled to the same levels as under Cap uh, predecessor Capaldi. It's dipped to the lowest ever. Why is it dipped to the lowest ever? Because it's not very good. Really? That's the one. Because it's not very good. The decision to cast a woman as a doctor also meant that the merchandise became a pawn in the culture wars. Uh, further, uh, wow. They are looking for anything to excuse uh, to, to excuse this failure. Further souring relationships in, uh, in fandom and making social media posts of the show's creators and uh, stars toxic uh, to wade through. Excuse me. Toxic fandom were the fans of this era, right? We've always had disagreements in fandom. We've always had people say, oh, I don't like Pertwee. I don't like uh, Peter Davison. I don't like this story. I don't like that. And people say, I love that. I love it. And you would fight it out at a bar and then you'd laugh with each other. Because it's like we all love Doctor Who. But no, this new brand of uh, uh, mentally ill, I think mainly mentally ill fans, uh, uh, could not coexist in the world where they're, they're, where Jodie wasn't the bestest, greatest ever. Because it was never about Doctor Who for them, right? It was never about Doctor Who. It was about social engineering. It was about breaking that glass ceiling, about dealing with these years of unjust oppression of women and I, look, I have to tell you um college educated women college educated attractive women college blonde college educated attractive women are uh rather than being oppressed i think the most um privileged group of people uh that the history of species has ever seen Right, so I don't know where they get this like he's a competitor. Oh, he looked at me like he wanted to sleep with me. Maybe he did, right? Okay, uh, that that doesn't mean you face depression. <laughs> okay, that means you face normative heterosexuality and you're a bit of a bitch about it, right? That's really what that means. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so they're talking about uh, social media, no, about merch life. He's trying right now to cover up the fact that the one, the one, the many metrics that this era has completely failed in, right? Has completely and utterly failed in. Uh, uh, it shows it's completely utterly failed. Is a merchandise. Merchandise was because everywhere, everywhere, season eleven, like the you had the Jody coat, Jody doll, Jody this, rainbow, 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 everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Where's it now? is on clearance if it's anywhere at all nobody's interested nobody is interested and nobody's interested to the extent that it's damaged the the entirety of the brand i uh think that sales in general are down for everything conductor related why because interest is at an all-time low right it really is at an all-time low uh the series has also been getting increasingly grandiose over the years uh um it's been if you're saying like the last two years, I, I grant you, so I'm not sure that's the right word. But how many times can a Daleks be destroyed and then return? Every year. No problem. Uh, the Master Missy be dead and reared here every year with a new face. I, I, yeah, uh, well, what you're talking about now is uh, Chris Chibnall's uh, uh, um, karaoke style uh, approach of writing where he looks at things that happened before that work and redoes them. But because he's not very good, does them worse. I mean, really... Can we just have Pip and Jane, the ghost of Pip and Jane Baker and uh, 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 John Nathan Turner do a Mystery Science Sierra 3000 voiceover for, for these episodes? Right, right. I, like, yeah, I'll tell you, three funny people who could do impersonations, they would do very well with that. Right, they would do very well with that. I would love to see that. 
and maybe put, have a, a Chris Chibnall there as well. Yeah, maybe the writing could have been a bit better. Uh, uh, maybe it could there, Critty Boy. Maybe it could. Uh, but uh, all the Earth has been invaded, but still hardly one acknowledges aliens are, are even out there. Again, they kind of reboot it every few years. And every few years, you do have similar stories. You have a companion first trip with the Doctor. You have the companions, like, entering. Because it, it, it's a constantly renewing uh, cycle. At least it was until it was killed by Chris Chibnall and uh, uh, Jodie Whittaker, which this article was telling us. That. Yet, when the showrunner Chris Chibnall tried to lower the temperature slightly with his first season finale, you mean he wrote crap that was boring? Lower the temperature. Why would you want to lower the temperature for your season finale? Like, why would you want, ooh, I'm going to get Tim Shaw, and he's got teeth in his face and everything. Yeah, he was crap. He was crap, much like the rest of the series, um, which only featured a returning lesser-known villain uh, threatening to destroy Earth. It's widely panned uh, as low stakes. Well, it was actually kind of high stakes, because they, they, <coughs> they had magic aliens in it that could destroy the universe or something. Oh, God, it's stupid. It, it, yeah, it was just badly written. It feels as if over the 16-year run, the volume of story arcs have gradually turned uh, turned up to a Spinal Tap S11 and now can be turned out. No, no. Listen, I believe in God. I believe in God, which means I believe uh, uh, in the infinite. I believe that there is a infinite uh, reality, right? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, infinite means infinite. There is no... Where is this not it? There's no way of uh, limiting it, right? And and the I think the one of the few places you can see that is ideas. The, you're never going to run out of ideas. You can always have more ideas. Uh, it's just if you're talented or not, right? And they're not hiring for talent, and very, very, very obviously. Um, uh, uh, it, it feels as if over the 16 years, yeah, fine, it can be turned down, right? Fine. As somebody who loved Tom Baker as a Doctor in the 70s, I have found success of 2005 Revival wonderful to watch, but I think you're also very dedicated to this identity politics um, racism, right? And that's why you were so excited to merge your love of Doctor Who with your love of uh, 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 this insane uh, uh, racism, right? And you're like, hey! And you thought it was going to be the stunning and brave and be a whole new world of people loving a female Doctor and gender was no more! And it was happy and everything was wonderful! And it didn't work out that way, did it? Because they're, 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 they're basically taking a shit on your doorstep and telling it that telling you it's chocolate right um as somebody who loved tom baker as a doctor in the 70s i have found success with a uh, wonderful watch but while doctor who look uh, uh looks better than it ever has the sequences with the side man uh through the battle cruiser towards the end of last season are worth the price of admission alone everything around it feels tired the reason it feels tired is is chris chimnall oh i'm not actually sure that's the case really i think it is chris chimnall but i think he's de de generated a like a tired field around it, like a, 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 a around the whole of Doctor Who. A, a, a big finish. The the audio company uh, have uh, been doing this thing called Dalek Universe with David Tennant, and supposed to be very Dalek-y, um, with like lots of like Daleks doing Daleky stuff in it. You know, that's what that's how they sold it. And it's not that. It feels like they're tired. It feels like they're tired of doing this type of thing. But they weren't tired, interestingly enough, uh, in this other box set they did called The War Doctor Begins when they recast the person played John Hurt, uh, who was the War Doctor, right? And uh, uh, he was fantastic, right? Jonathan Gary, absolutely fantastic. Gave a really good performance. It wasn't an impersonation. It was actually a performance. It was really good. But with that set, where they didn't have David Tennant to rely on, uh, and they knew it was experimental... What did they do with that one? No, they, they there was no agenda in that. There was no, uh, uh, you know, f let's introduce a female Barusa or whatever. Bulga. Yeah, no, there was none of that. It was just good Dalek stories, right? It was good the War Doctor stories, traditional story. Why? Because they knew they didn't have the latitude to piss around. Yes, yeah, something like uh, Stranded, Stranded, where they where where they know people are going to buy it no matter what. And I, I, I bought the first two box sets of it. I'm not buying number three and four. Um, where they, they, they fill it full of this insane agenda. They made uh, one character into a gender and sexually fluid woman who was never before. And then which she's from the future. So, well, everyone in the future uh, is gender and, and sexually fluid. Because that's normal. No, it's not, baby. No, it's not. Okay? I know that's your religion. I know that's what you want to believe. It's still not. The ability to uh, travel anywhere in time and space makes the Doctor uh, Doctor Who series 
uh, that could uh, possibly tell a million uh, a million uh, brilliant different stories. Uh, and Chibnall's innovation on the Timeless Child, uh, meaning there are dozens of guest stars, uh, guest star Doctor Who uh, we have met before, opens up the shit, uh, opens up to go in new directions. Yeah, that new direction was to go into unpopular shit. You've taken the stakes away from the character, right? You 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 you've detached the character from any semblance of internal con uh, uh, consistency and continuity, right? And so it just doesn't feel that it matters anymore, right? It felt like it mattered before, but it doesn't feel like it mattered. It doesn't, and it doesn't feel like that to the normie. And they don't, they don't think about it. They don't like, go, oh, I'm, I'm intellectually thinking. No, they just feel that it's not. It's not really doesn't matter and it's boring and they switch off because it's not very good uh but it doesn't feel uh if it's as close to telling a million a million brilliant stories so honestly the 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 core of doctor who about being two friends uh uh traveling time space writing wrong uh, uh yeah i think you've got to add in the character of being a genius revolutionary right make that move to a genius counterculture revolutionary who will do what's right uh regardless of if it feels good or if it feels comfortable Right again, the absolute opposite to this crushing conformist that is Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, which is why I don't really consider it Doctor at all. But again, nobody really uh, 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 knows this, you know, thinks about this stuff without analyzing it like over and over and over again. Um, uh, but it does feel like, and quite frankly, the format of Doctor Who could be anything, could be steampunk, could be historical, could be sci fi. Could be a uh, murder mystery. Could be anything. Literally any any, any genre. Uh, it can it can morph into wonderfully because most genres do have uh, uh, you know can support a uh, a revolutionary genius right being 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 thrown into the mix. Uh, I can't think of any, I, I, maybe maybe uh, like female led drama like Call the Midwife, which I think this one this Doctor Who really does uh, 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 feel like. Um, it feels like it's an increasingly self-absorbed meta story about its own run, uh, accompanied by a very vocal online fan that isn't quite sure what it wants. No, we know what it what we want. We know exactly what we want. We want this crap gone. We want it gone. Okay, so now I see the his, the, his attack. So his attack is to explain why this era has failed. They say, no, it didn't fail. It didn't. It just got tired. It just got old. And it had all those toxic fans always picking, 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 picking. Oh, and it just made everybody, it bummed everybody out and nobody was really interesting, interested in it. And it was better. It just got back to the same level as Peter Capaldi. Lies, lies and lies. Um, but we are being, uh, we are a very vocal fandom. That isn't quite sure what it, we know what it wants, but knows it doesn't want this. No, listen, listen, we want, uh, uh, we know it doesn't want, we don't want this. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, we want something good. <laughs> How hard is that? And something good could be a bazillion different things, but we don't want this. You know why? Because it's not very good. That, And I know you've told us for the last few years, it's very good. And if we don't like it, we're wasted. And we're bigots. Yeah. I know you told us that, but you were lying then, and you're still lying now. And, and honestly, the egg's all over your face, mate, isn't it? That's why, because you see the you see it's about to be cancelled, which is why why, why you wrote the article. Um, maybe the BBC needs to try something other than carrying on a break, a feature film, God no, a co-production deal. That's what they have right now. An anthology series featuring uh, familiar characters in in the universe who aren't the Doctors. Terrible idea. Uh, uh, anything other than slowly grinding out uh, a couple more series formatted if it was two th still 2005 no adapt to the to current day uh, production I mean I think I, I, honestly with it, we live in an era of uh, binge watching uh, it seems to me that now is the best time to do like a 10 part uh, like very connected story right uh although you know Russell D. Davis was right that people tend to like want to if people are tuning in they don't want to be lost in the middle so that's a, that's like yeah that's like you have to uh, navigate to but are people still tuning in or are people watching on, on iplayer um i don't know i don't know it's an interesting question uh but again it's 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 not the uh uh it's it's not external factors it's internal factors. Maybe be you know, again carrying on. Uh, anything a, gr a grind uh, as it was two thousand five. I have long resigned myself to the fact that I will never see every Doctor Who story. Why not? I have. 
I mean, I've heard the ones that are, that are white. Uh, not just because some of the episodes were in the six of white, but because they will make Doctor Who stories in comic books, audio, uh, uh, books, comics, audio, and yes, television long after I'm dead. Yeah, we've all come to that. Okay, if you're 50, uh, that's my birthday, by the way. Uh, if you're 50, you're going you, you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna know that. Uh, in Judaism, we say, ad uh, uh, estim until 120 years. P human beings, are, are, according to Jew Jewish philosophy, are designed to live uh, 120 years. So I'm not even halfway through yet. Look at that. Um, at some point, uh, uh, at some point, the t uh, TV will run by people who grew up with this uh, excitement of seeing Chris, uh, Chris Eccleston grab uh, Billy Piper's hand and, and tell us to run. We're there now in two thousand five. We're a hundred percent there now. I mean, um, that guy Dominic, uh, whatever he, uh, uh, cosplayer, working for Big, Big Finish. He got into a little bit of Twitter weirdness recently. Uh, looks like a really, really nice guy, right? Looks like a really a very creative guy, very intelligent guy. Uh, uh, yeah, he was one of those kids. He was one of those kids, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that's exciting for me, right? As an old fan, that's genuinely exciting for me, and I, I, I'm excited for Doctor Who to go off in directions that I don't think of or I don't particularly like, even. I, I, that are different from what I what I'm not happy to do is Doctor Who to go off in the opposite direction of itself to hate itself to say everything that came before was, was, was unwatchable and terrible that's what I'm not happy to do um uh run uh, who remember David Denner and Matt Smith uh, uh hiding behind the sofa from Weeping Angels uh, uh when they were children again we're there now but maybe in order for them to, uh to think uh reviving Doctor Who would be brilliant there it needs to take a rest first uh, honestly, here's my take on it. If they had a production team that stopped on a dime, like Toby Whitehouse, Whitehouse, whatever his name is, uh, and they just did good traditional Doctor Who, right? Uh, uh, people would flock to it in a second. I think you'll be getting ratings in the 10 to 12 millions. I think it'll be huge. And we see that with the uh, anything that isn't full of this agenda, which is because it's uh, very... Um, uh, uh, um, uh, was the word uh, cre creator led like they, they what Jim and Cora did uh, li line of duty and the BBC want line, line of duty it kind of fits their diversity thing but it's not as much as they want uh, uh, but you know those things that are very creator led uh, are doing incredibly well do incredibly well because there is a first for genuine entertainment and there's a reason there's a thirst for genuine entertainment it's because the BBC are not doing their job they are not providing entertainment so there you go, there you go. Uh, uh, the uh, the chimes of doom. <laughs> the uh, 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 the cloister bell uh, uh, is is chiming. Uh, it's over, Jodie darling. It's over. Although I might find out on Sunday they're announcing the uh, the new Doctor. So who who knows? They're probably not. They're probably not. But who knows? Or Deathstream. I get a feeling that it's over. And, and as somebody who's loved Doctor Who all my life, can I just say thank God. Yes, thank God. My name is Leela Beckett, the new rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring that little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. Yeah.